I recently had a conversation with leadership and executive coach Lisa Marie Plathke, a former federal narcotics agent, gun, bads, the real deal, where we talked about getting prioritized. And she has an eye-opening approach to this important productivity challenge that you'll want to hear. To quickly set this up, this was part of episode 84, The Power of Theming, in which I shared how this handy conceptual tool can help you stay focused on any given task, improve your time management, and stay aligned with your priorities. You can watch the full episode as a member of Crusher TV at CrusherTV.com. But here is my conversation with Lisa Marie Plasky about her approach to helping her clients get prioritized on the right things. Welcome, Lisa Marie. Welcome to the show. Hello, hello, Alan. It's fabulous to be here with you. Thanks so much for having me. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is prioritization, how we often we think we're setting priorities, but we're often fooling ourselves, and also something you call non-negotiables. Uh, but first, I, something really cool about you is that you're a former federal narcotics agent, and I'm really interested in how that parlayed into leadership and executive coaching. So I started on the piers in New York and actually I had the badge and the gun and the boots and the whole nine yards on the piers in New York and uh, loved, loved what I did and work started off in uh, narcotics interdiction and went into money laundering investigations, worked at the airport, was there during 9-11 and that's actually where I fell in love with leadership and had the ability to teach at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center and also develop curriculum post 9-11 for leaders in the Department of Homeland Security for four agencies that were merged together. So just loved, loved, loved that. And it taught me a lot about priorities. It taught me a lot about creating non-negotiables. It's very easy to get sucked into a career and and decisions that you have no business you know you can you can truly lose your life in in the job and uh, especially after 9/11 when we were working 16 hour shifts and that's really partially where after going through a period of burnout I learned a lot about how to live your your priorities or, or live my priorities. Even as I left the government, I was I was on increasingly progressive career track and was told this is the stupidest move you've ever made. And I thought I'm choosing my life and I'm choosing my relationship with my husband over my career. And fingers crossed it'll work out well. And if it doesn't, I'll reinvent or come back and work in law enforcement again. And I took the risk, and 12 years later, it's worked out well. And because you work with a lot of high-level and super busy people, many of whom come to you with issues around prioritization, now, when you and I were talking a while ago about prioritization, you gave me a little bit of a history on that word that was kind of interesting. So uh, the word priority was actually created in the 14th century, and its Latin roots are prior. And... In the 20th century, somehow we got away from the definition, which was something that matters most. Like what is the, the element that matters most in your life? And we turned it into priorities. And then to distinguish what matters most, rather than just one thing, having a lot of things that matter, we use words like top or first priority or highest priority. And so a priority in, in looking at what the word was actually created for is that it's, it's one. It's the one thing that moves you forward, that matters most, that actually gets you to the life and the business you want. Right. And as it is in the 20th century and all the more in the 21st century, we've come to understand our priority as being many, many different things, and in fact, too many things for our own good. Uh, you also make a distinction between priorities and goals, which is something that gets us into trouble. So going back to that term of priority, it's about identifying as an individual, because you remember you, you shared the element of, of leadership doesn't have to be organizational, it's also personal leadership. And so identifying for yourself as the individual, what is it? What is it that matters most? What is it that if you could move towards one thing that that, it, that, that would be 
where every action that you took led you to what it is that you wanted. And a lot of times when people create goals, goals are, they, be, they tend to become accomplishments and boxes that are checked. And they don't necessarily lead to a very clear or intention or very clear or focused intention or purpose. They just lead to getting a lot of things done. And so then at the end of the day or week or year, there are people who go, what happened? Like, well, how did I end up here? And priorities are the elements that lead us to what we really want so that we can be happy and successful and fulfilled rather than just be somebody who has a lot of boxes checked off of things that they've gotten done. Uh, how do you help your clients make that critical distinction between priorities and just goals? I, I, I believe in both the power of asking great questions as well as immediately implementable tools. And one of the quickest ways to look at this are being aware of what your non-negotiables are. So when I meet with a client on a VIP day and sit down with them with their calendar, I ask them to identify what are the things in their life that are non-negotiables, that they are not willing to negotiate that they must do. It could be meditation, it could be exercise, it could be vacations, whatever those elements are, so that those are the ones that are elevated to ensure that they get put in part of an effective plan. And then from there to be able to look at if you can move three things a mile versus working on a hundred things throughout the course of the year that you simply move an inch, what would those three things be? And it's amazing how some people really struggle with this, really struggle with the being able to answer what it is that they want and to be able to struggle with putting that all down on paper and making the commitment. And yet, both research shows it, and I've seen it with clients, that there's so much more fulfillment when you're living your priorities and your top priority than when you simply get a lot done. What are some examples of non-negotiables? Oftentimes, non-negotiables, people view them as elements of, of of something for themselves that's worthy of negotiation. So they put time in their calendar and there's eventually some sort of scope, some sort of creep into it where somebody says, hey, this is the only time I can meet and someone will cancel the time for them to write their book, create curriculum, do something also for their own, for their own business or self-care, it'll disappear. So uh, taking time to be able to get a massage, taking time to go out golfing, whatever it is for you that allows you to be a better person and that allows you to focus on whatever it is that matters most to you. That's a non-negotiable. And, and most people don't live their life as if there are anything, any non-negotiables. Everything is up for negotiation when it comes to time. And it's a dangerous place to live. And I can definitely see how we can easily you know, like pay lip service to these non-negotiables and then you know, we just skirt them, negotiate our way out of them. So how do you help clients to make sure that when they determine what they call a non-negotiable that it doesn't become slippery? So the question that I always ask myself is, will saying yes to this opportunity get me closer to what I want most with ease and spaciousness? And if the answer is no, then it has to be a no for me because I understand that what's, gonna, what's going to go away is the non-negotiables because there's only so much time, right? So the things that are most important are the things that seem to get peeled away, people's exercise, they're eating healthy, whatever it is. And so I do a lot to ensure that clients are asking themselves the right questions before making a decision and to ensure that they're really tied to the why, that's a non-negotiable for them. Why is that so critically important? Why does it matter that you wake up in the morning and that you, you meditate? What does that do for you? Why is it important that you spend time and have a, a date night with your, your partner or meet your children and, and be able to participate in their sports activities? Why? And if you can go back to that and ask yourself questions, it allows you to be able to say yes over and over and over again to what matters most. Uh, you remind me of a quote from, I think it was James Altucher who said, if something is not a hell yeah, then it's a no. 
<laughs> and if we, yeah. if, if we were to just stick with that a little bit more often in our daily lives, we'd be, we'd be definitely pursuing our priorities more than just goals. Yes, yes. So tell us where people can get in touch with you. And I think you've got a couple interesting things on your website. Yes, thank you. So to get in touch with me, uh, my website is www.upsidethinking, U-P-S-I-D-E, and the word thinking.com. And on the website, there's information about me and contacting me in case you have other questions uh, that come up for you as around priorities. I've done a lot of research on this. And there's also details about my annual event where we spend a half a day on on living your priorities. And that event is Design Your Destiny Live. And I, this is what your 10th year doing this event. And I've heard amazing things about it. We'll put information about that event in the notes and the resources tab. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. I look forward to having you back and talking more. Thanks so much, Alan.